Blog Talk Radio. Well, good morning. It's Blog Talk Radio, interpreters of the oracles of God. I hope everybody's doing good today. I have had some major warfare, and I am asking that you would please pray for me and pray for this show. The last couple weeks, there has just been incredible warfare against this against uh, this show. And so, please, saints of God, please pray for this show. Um, I'm just going to plead the blood of Jesus over this show and ask that the warring angels would come and guard this show and guard the airwaves and guard everything having to do with this show in Jesus' name. And I'm just going to say, um, when you go to war in your land against the adversary who attacks you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpet that you may be remembered before the Lord your God and saved from every single one of your enemies. And so I'm going to blow the show far because I couldn't get any other music on either, along with the many other issues I've been having here. So, if this even works. to say thank you to IHOP Kansas for allowing me to play their music, which today I'm not going to get to play because I couldn't, it wouldn't come on. Thank you for blessing us and keeping us and making your face to shine. Up. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Lord, for blessing them, keeping them and making your face to shine upon them and giving them your peace and giving them above and beyond what they could ever ask or even think or even imagine. And I call this one a living, I call this one fragrant incense arising to the throne of God, and I don't think I'll have enough time today to start the second part, which I called A Living Harp, Singing His Praises. And so my prayer today is just as it is written, things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. But for us, this is 1 Corinthians 2.10, God has revealed them, through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. And my prayer is that we will have the revelation for that our eyes will see and our ears will hear. And the revelation is, is that our eyes do see and our ears do hear. And, and we can know everything. We can know everything. The Holy Spirit reveals them to us. In 1 Corinthians 2.12 it says, We have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God. And just as the scriptures say, we have the spirit of the Lord, and we may know the things freely given to us by God. And so I'm going to go into Psalm 14.1, which says, May my prayer be counted as incense, as incense before you, the lifting up of our hands as the evening offering. And so I want to talk about I want to talk about the temple and how the temple was divided into three courts. The outer court, the holy place, and the holiest of all. And that the altar of incense stood in the second of these. The holy place, the altar of burnt offering, stood in the court without. It was not until that altar with its sacrifice had been passed that that anyone could enter the holy place where the altar of incense stood. There were three pieces of furniture in that place, the altar of incense, the golden candlestick, and the table of showbread. Of of these three, the altar of incense stood in the center. Twice a day, the incense was kindled upon it by a priest by means of live coals brought from the altar of burnt offerings in the outer court. And thus kindled, the wreaths of fragrant smoke ascended on high. All day long the incense smoldered upon the altar, and twice a day kindled into a bright flame. Oh, excuse me. There was much preparation 
which went into the making of the incense with the pure spices. And what kind of analogy of how we should prepare ourselves? Think of Romans 12, 1. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. So think of how our prayers can be like fragrant incense arising to the throne. The incense became fragrant when it was kindled by live coals. And we can use that metaphor too, that our hearts are like the incense, asking God to kindle us with his fire and his love and his passion. And our loving him with all of our hearts and souls, minds and emotions will cause us, will cause that for us. He came himself, think about this in the Old Testament, He came himself with his own fire. And who is the fire of God? Well, it's the Holy Spirit, right? He's the fire. Didn't Jesus say, I'm going to baptize. There's one that comes with water. John the Baptist said this. John the Baptist said that. But there is one who's coming who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And so I want you to go into... Leviticus 9.23, Moses and Aaron went into the tent of meeting, and when they came out and blessed the people, the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people, and I want you to notice this fire came out from the Lord. And it was his fire. It was his fire. Then fire came out from before the Lord and consumed the burnt offerings and the portions of fat on the altar. And when all the people saw it, They shouted and fell on their faces. In the burnt offering, the sacrificial animal was completely reduced to ashes on the altar. The offering represents the desire of the person offering to be in complete unity with God. The offering symbolizes the entire abandonment to God of that person or people. And the burnt offering was to be without defect. Leviticus 1, 3 And 10, verse 10, foreshadowing the perfect sacrifice of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. The grain offering in Leviticus 2, 6, 14 through 23, the grain offering was also known as the meal or cereal offering. It was the only offering without blood and was called a gift. This offering demonstrated Israel's complete reliance on God as shown by the presenting of the produce of the earth. Although accompanied the burnt offering, the green offering was a separate offering. The former is a symbol of a life devoted to God. The latter, the fruits of labor dedicated to him. The grain offering had such a beautiful symbolism. Oil, of course, is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Incense, the sacrifice of prayer, the absence of yeast or leaven and honey was spiritual purity. Salt was preservation and permanence. Isn't that beautiful? It was a pleasing aroma, God's approval and pleasure. I mean, when we pray, we want God, we want it to be a pleasing offering before the Lord. Because otherwise, our prayers are kind of pointless, aren't they? And so, it says this in Leviticus 21.6. They shall be holy to their God and not profane the name of their God. For they present the offerings by fire to the Lord, the, the food of their God. So they shall be holy. In Leviticus 9.6, Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord has commanded you to do, that the glory of the Lord may appear to you. Moses then said to Aaron, come near to the altar and offer your sin offering and your burnt offering, that you may make atonement for yourself and for the people. Then make the offering for the people, that you may make atonement for them, just as the Lord has commanded. Now there's there's other offerings too, but we're not going to really talk about them. In Leviticus 9.23, it says, Moses and Aaron went into the tent of meeting. 
when they came out and blessed the people, the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. Then the fire came out from before the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the portions of fat on the altar. And when all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. And we have to just keep in mind that the fire that came from the Lord, it it was on the altar, and that was the fire of God. It wasn't common fire. It literally came out of heaven. And do you see how the Lord, how the fire came from the Lord? It consumed the burnt offering, and it was the way the Lord prescribed it. It wasn't some random way. And so what really is strange fire? I mean, really, what is strange fire? Did you ever wonder what it really, really is? Well, who is the fire? Who, what did you, when Jesus said, or when John the Baptist said, there is, I come preaching repentance, but there is one who's going to come and baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. Because the fire of God is the Holy Spirit. And so I want to talk about, uh, uh, I want to talk about Nadab and Abihu because it's really, it's, it's very serious when it comes to us because we have to really, really watch ourselves because when we're doing intercession and we're praying and we're we're doing whatever God has called us to do, we do not want to have strange fire. And I know none of us do. And so we have to watch the purity of our hearts. And why are we doing it? Why are we why are we doing what we're doing? Because we can literally go into the holy place by the blood of Jesus, but it has to really be all about Jesus. It has to be all about him and him alone. And so we want to be those pleasing pleasing sacrifices. I know you do, and I know I do. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. In the dedication of the temple of the Lord, the sacrifices placed on the altar of burnt offering were accepted by the Lord and consumed by a fire that came from the glory of the Lord. And this is no ordinary fire. It was a sacred fire, a holy fire, from the glory of the Lord, the Lord himself. This same fire was then used to burn the incense that was taken into the tabernacle to the altar of incense. In Leviticus 16, 12, it says, And he shall take a censer censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Lord, and his hands full of sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it within the veil. And Leviticus 16, 1613 says, and he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony, that he die not. Now, they were warned what to do and what not to do. It says, the smoke of the incense, burning with the sacred fire from the Lord, preserved the life of the priest. While he was in the tabernacle, it was very, very serious because it had to be the smoke of the incense had to be with the sacred fire from the Lord. And I, I, I'm going to just uh, talk about uh, they, Nadab and Abihu. They did not obey the Lord's exact instructions they had been given and filled their censers with a fire that did not originate from the holy fire of the altar. And when we think about that, we can think about that as as the Holy Spirit and and the things that come from him because there's so much strange fire out there today. There's 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 the occult coming in the church. There's the new age coming in the church. This is not of the Lord. This is strange fire. 
And I'm not talking about it from not having experience, but because before I came to the Lord in the 80s, I was into that stuff. And so I get it. I'm not coming, uh, I'm not talking about it and not knowing it personally. And so the Holy Spirit has his gifts. The Holy Spirit has his fruits. The Holy Spirit is the illuminator of the word. The Holy Spirit is the sanctifier. And he, he sanctifies us daily. And that's why it's so important to want to have a pure, pure motive, pure heart motive. Because when we do intercession, we want to come in with a pure heart, pure motive. We want to, we want to enter into that holy place by the blood of Jesus, we want it to be out of complete allegiance to Jesus, to his kingdom purposes. We want to be able to go and say, Lord, what is on your heart today? What is your prayer list, Lord? What do you want us to pray on earth as it is in heaven? In your power and not some strange fire, Lord God. And so they did not obey him at all. They did not in, obey the instructions that were in the work, in 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 the scriptures, and filled their censers with that strange fire. They entered a, the tabernacle with a profane fire, a common fire that afforded them no protection, and they instantly perished. This was so serious that they were not even mourned. Now, Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took their respective fire pans and after putting fire in them, placed incense on it and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded. And that is Leviticus 10, 1. And so the interesting thing about it is that they did not, they did not, have the the respect for the Lord and and the reverence of God and his word and they they were they were taken out just like the word of God said that they would be. And so I think it's so interesting because you see that a lot today too. You see it in I mean you see it you see it in church. You see it you see it everywhere. You see it with worship. You see it with whatever. It, I don't want. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody, because really, I'm I'm speaking to the choir, because I want to have a pure and holy heart when I go into intercession. And I know we all do. And I know we're all being sanctified continually. Well, hello. I was cut off. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so we're going to continue. And in the meantime, I did get one of the uh, one of the songs on, even though we got cut off. So I hope you're still there. And so we're gonna try to get this song going. And so we were talking about the purity of God. And so we're gonna stop and play just a little bit of this song because obviously. <laughs> There's been a whole bunch of things going on here. And so I'm going to play the throne of God a little bit for you because that's where we get to go in intercession.
in heaven. Now behold, there is a throne seated in heaven, and there is one upon. One upon the throne Who's like jasper Who's like sardius stone That very throne of heaven Dwelling in light on 
I'm just going to let that play in the background because when we do intercession, that's really where we're going is into the throne. And I wanted to read you Adam Clark's commentary on Nadab and Abihu. And it says this, the manner of burning incense in the temple service was according to the Jews as follows. One when they gathered the ashes from off the altar into a golden vessel. A second brought a vessel full of incense and a third brought a censer with fire and put coals on the altar. And he whose office it was to burn the incense strewed it on the fire at the command of the governor. At the same time, all the people went out of the temple from between the porch and the altar. Each day they burned the weight of a hundred denarius of incense, 50 in the morning and 50 in the evening. The hundred denarius weighed 50 shekels of the sanctuary, each shekel weighing 320 barley corns. And when the priest had burned the incense, he bowed himself down and went his way out. So when Zacharias, as to his lot fell, burned incense in the temple, the whole multitude of people were without at prayer while the incense was burning. By his service, God taught them that the prayers of his faithful people are pleasing to him, whilst our high whilst our high priest, the Lord Jesus, by his mediation puts incense to their prayers. Think about Romans 8.34. It tells us that Jesus is at the right hand of God, making incense for us. Think about Hebrews 7.24 and 25. But Jesus, on the other hand, because he continues forever, holds his priesthood permanently. Therefore, he is able to save forever those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Now, the main point in what has been said is this. This is Hebrews 8.1. We have such a high priest who has taken his... Oh, that went up, but that's okay. A minister in the sanctuary and in the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not men. You know, it was like that every sacrifice might be acceptable to him. He sent his own fire as the emblem of his presence and the means of consuming the sacrifice. And here we find that Aaron's sons neglecting the divine ordinance, the means of consuming the sacrifices. And offering incense was strange, that is common fire, not of a celestial origin. It was God's fire from heaven that they were supposed to use. You know, and we could say that Jesus is the one that baptizes us in the Holy Spirit. He's the one that baptizes us with fire. The Holy Spirit is the sanctifier. And, you know, you got to remember... We were supposed to, they were supposed to wait, it was a command to wait in Jerusalem, if you go in the older versions, to receive the power of the Spirit and to be a witness. The gift of the Spirit is for us, it's for our children and as many as the Lord our God shall call. And and those, and let me say this, everyone, Jesus paid for everyone, but they have to choose to be chosen. They have to receive this call. And so they waited for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, literally since the book of Joel. And the Holy Spirit poured out dreams and visions and prophecy, and he continually pours out for anybody who receives him. You have to ask and receive just like you did salvation, and you ask Jesus to come into your life and forgive your sins. And then you made your commitment to him. Well, it's the same thing. We have to ask. And receive the Holy Spirit. And he he didn't quit pouring out. That was the first that was the the manifestation of the prophecy of Joel. And so he gives us gifts and he grows fruits in us. Did you know that Jesus is the one who gave the fivefold ministry when he ascended into heaven? He didn't take it away. Men tried to wipe it out because they didn't they didn't they 
they like it. They're, they like the one-fold ministry, <laughs> but that was not just the plan of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit didn't pour out just for him to take it away. In that case, people who say that passed away, well, then they need to look at the rest of the scriptures. They can't pick and choose what they feel passed away and, and, and say what they want but don't understand the others, so they call that, that it's, it's gone, it's no longer around. That's not true. So when we intercede, we don't want to bring strange fire to the throne. And if you really want to look at doctrines, go and look in Acts 19 of the baptisms, the baptism of repentance, of, uh, into, of salvation into the name of Jesus, and the baptism in the Holy Spirit. That was when that Holy Spirit began to act through his church. That was just the start of it. it he didn't wipe it out. <laughs> so let's go to Romans 8.26. In the same way, the, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And there actually is groaning in intercession. But the Holy Spirit will literally pray through us. That's the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the gift of tongues, gift of, of devotional tongues, speaking in other tongues. There's varieties of tongues, and we talked about that. Uh, there's when you're in a assembly and you have to, if someone uh, says a, a, something in tongues, there has to be an interpreter. And even they can, if God gives them the interpretation, they can do that too. And then there's our, our our devotional tongues. We could pray from morning till night with 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 the, the tongues He gives us, and those tongues are used in intercession also. It's like, just think about what, what was said in Romans 8.26. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep, groanings too deep for words. And there is, like I said, actual groanings also. Think about uh, going to John 16, sorry, verse 13. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative. But whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. Isn't that beautiful? That's pretty prophetic, isn't it? What's going what's gonna to come? <laughs> he will glorify me, for he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. That's John sixteen fourteen. That means Jesus will speak to you, and you will hear him. Because how can he take of his and disclose it to us? Because if he's disclosing to us, we have to hear what he says, don't we? In John sixteen fifteen, all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. Well, how does he do it? The Holy Spirit to our spirits. <laughs> Hebrews four sixteen tells us that we can come boldly to the throne of grace in time of need. Hebrews 10.9 tells us we have boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. We can ask him what he wants us to intercede about. He will show us and he will tell us. That is prophetic intercession. We can, like John, we can, like John, ask Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit to disclose to us what is to come, to take what is of Jesus. He will take what is of Jesus and disclose it to us. And therefore, we're going to go back to Nadab and Abihu. And therefore, the fire of God consumed them. So that fire, which, if properly applied, would have sanctified and consumed their gift, became now the very instrument of their destruction. How true is the saying, the Lord is a consuming fire. He will either hallow or destroy us. He will purify our souls by the influence of the Holy Spirit or consume them with the breath of his mouth. The tree which is properly planted in good soil is nourished by the general influences of the sun. Pluck it up from its roots, and the sun, which was the cause of its vegetated life and perfection, now dries up its juices, decomposes its parts, and causes it to smolder into dust. Thus must it be done by those who grieve and do not despite, and do not despite to the Spirit of God Rather hast thou this heavenly fire, hear then the voice of God, quench not the spirit. 
Some critics are of the opinion that the fire used by the sons of Aaron was the sacred fire and that it is only called strange from the manner of placing the incense on it. I cannot see the force of this opinion. This is Adam Clark again, which he commanded them not. Every part of the religion of God is divine. He alone knew what he designed by its rites and ceremonies. For that which they prefigured, the whole economy of redemption by Christ was conceived in his own mind and was out of the reach of human wisdom and conjecture. He therefore, who altered any part of this representative system, who omitted or added anything, assumed a prerogative which belonged to God alone and was certainly guilty of a very high offense against the wisdom, justice, and righteousness of his maker. This appears to have been the sin of Nadab and Abihu. And this at once shows the reason why they were so severely punished. The most awful judgment judgments are threatened against those who either add or take away from the declarations of God. And so next week we're going to talk about the significance of the harp. And it, it's just so beautiful. I, I used to write for a ministry called uh, School of Prayer, and I m- wrote many uh, small teachings. And I really wanted to share with you next week, this is having to do with um, intercession about the harp and what it means. And so uh, a couple years ago, well, more than a couple now, this girl came up to me and told me that she saw a white, hand, a white harp on my hand. And it really puzzled me. Another time we were doing creative activations, prophetic activations, And one of the girls said the Lord told her he was going to prophesy which instrument he saw us as. So I said, Lord, well, she said a harp. And so what's the significance of the harp? I asked the Lord, what what are you trying to reveal to me, Lord? And so I started a little study on the harp. And so that's what I'm going to share with you next week because I really do love to worship. And I love when the atmosphere in in our house is filled with his presence. And so, and so next week, I'm going to uh, start um, talking about the harp, and I'm going to we're going to go in the Old Testament and in the New. And what's really neat is if you go into One Chronicles 25, one, I'm just going to leave you with this. It says, "Moreover, David and the commanders of the army set apart for the service some of the sons of Asaph." and of Heman and Jejuthun, who were to prophesy. And that word there in the Hebrew is 05012, means to prophesy under the influence of a divine spirit. That is the definition, of course, we're applying to this, because that's what it is, with lyres, harps, and cymbals. And the number of those who performed their services was of the sons of Asaph, the Kor, Joseph, Nathaniah, and Asherilah, the sons of Asaph were under the directions of Asaph, who prophesied under the direction of the king of Jejuthun, the sons of Jejuthun, Gedaliah, Ziri, Jeshaiah, Shimi, Hashabiah, and Matitathiah. If there's any Jewish people out there and I'm messing up these names, forgive me. Six under the direction of their father, Jejuthun, with the harp, who prophesied in giving thanks and praising the Lord. And so we're going to, I want you to listen. I just thank God one of these songs came up. And so I want you to listen to this because this is where we can go into intercession and receive the things of the Lord to pray on earth as it is in heaven. That is, he has called us to do that. And so I'm going to play this song again. Of course, it's from IHOP called The Throne of God. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I pray you join me next week as we talk about the harp.
Very throne of heaven 